heaven forbid, Facebook. Heaven forbid I late leave the video for like half a second and come back in and have sound. We can put men on the moon. People can live with pig hearts. And Facebook cannot allow me to go back and come back in and have volume. It's almost like it's like the reverse of back to the future. Pour out this thing. Because, anyway, and the same reason I got suspended over on the Tales page because I showed a photo of a man with no clothes on and I covered up his province. I did not show him doing the flying squirrel. No, uh-uh. I had a great big old white block just like this, like pretend my eyes are my province. You can't see anything. I could put this over my bosom, and if you didn't see my nipple, they can't get me. Can't even say nipple. Anyway. <sighs> today is a cat. Today is college decision day in North Carolina. So if you're not from North Carolina, you're unaware of this. If you are from North Carolina, and you have a senior in high school, you, I don't know my road, you definitely know about this because it's sort of a stressful day. Now, um, your demonstration of the flying squirrel. Okay, I'll show you, ready? This is what the man was doing with his you know what. And I, I didn't show that. Okay, so the question did Thomas hear? I will go ahead and tell you this. Everybody hears. There's no not hearing. So before it was a put the kitty on the blanket. Before you got a letter, right? So you maybe you get your letter and maybe you don't get your letter. But now it ain't like that anymore. Now it's check your portal. So you're basically like Okay, let's pretend. This is my new portal. This is what happens when you go stress shopping at the home goods. You get a, <laughs> a brand new candle phone. Hello? <laughs> Blair just told me I was going to burn up the house if I lit this thing. Isn't this fantastic? I had to buy it. I mean, I, how could you not buy it? Yeah, it's a candle phone. This is what it feels like. This is how people, you, this, this is actually perfect. This is how do all North Carolina seniors have an opportunity to attend a state school? No, no way. Uh-uh, no way, Jose, negative ghost rider. Uh-uh, no sirree, Bobby. No, they do not. Mm -mm. There is no yellow brick road to a North Carolina university. Mm -mm. No, no, there's not. So just to answer your question, no. This portal here, oh, no, y'all made me forget what I was going to say. Um, has our Thomas come home? Yes. Oh, no, Thomas is in Miami with my parents. Um, hold on, let me get my thing. Can I show the picture without getting in trouble? No, I can't show the picture. I tried to put up the naughty picture with the cover and I still couldn't. Um, I mean, I tried to put up that picture on Facebook. It never even got up on Facebook and I immediately got suspended. So anyway, this is the portal. The portal. Y'all totally made me forget what I was going to say. I mean, I love this candle. Huh. Now I forgot what I was going to say. <sighs> College day. 
we have all, if you've raised children, you think to yourself, you know, I've got this wonderful baby and this is, he is a perfect child and he's just wonderful. And I, um, I want him <laughs> to do the best he can. So earlier today, I have really been practicing that. Is the candle scented? No, I just keep smelling it, hopefully, hoping it might scent, but it doesn't. Um, I have been practicing what it's like not to be disappointed, what it's like to trust in the system, what it's like to be happy for other people, and all the things, right? Yeah, everybody gets an answer. There's no not getting an answer. Well, I have had to practice all those things in the last two hours because we did not get good news or we did not get the news that Thomas wanted or that I wanted or that he wanted or that we felt like he should get, right? So he does not get the news he wants. And I will tell you, it's funny because I have, I've had some disappointment in my life, like real disappointment, you know? And I, I lost my only sibling to cancer as a teenager. That was tough. I, um, have a child with special needs. I got a pretty rough, um, diagnosis was hard. This was hard. It was harder than I thought. And still in that moment, I was like, you know, okay, I'm, I'm pissed. I'm mad. I don't even know who I'm mad at. I'm mad at somebody. And I think that this child is wonderful, wonderful. And my husband sent the nicest text. I don't think it's on this phone. And he said, you know, we love you and we are so proud of you. And we wouldn't trade you for anybody else on this planet. And um, it was just the nicest. It was the nicest text. And, and so I really am going to stand by all those things I said. I, um, I think he's awesome. And I think there's going to be a college out there that they're going to be like, he is fantastic. Doesn't mean he won't ever go to UNC. No, it doesn't. Maybe he'll go for his MBA or maybe he'll be like me and go for his master's. You know, what I told him about me not getting into Chapel Hill. When I applied to Chapel Hill, I didn't have a, you know, 30 something on the ACT like him. I had a, you know, 980 on the SAT. And Chapel Hill never sent me a letter telling me I got in or didn't get in. And my dad said at the time, and I told the story, maybe they thought, <laughs> it's still funny. Maybe they thought your application was a joke. <laughs> and I, I, and I never found that offensive because that's, that's how my family talks. Right. And, um, but Thomas was, you know, here's this child, like he's, you know, doing, he's, he, he, he's in the library on Sunday afternoons. I was like looking for keg remnants on Sunday afternoons, you know, like he deserved it more than, more than me. So anyway, um, but it's life, you know, it's life. And I went to Chapel Hill and I will say, I always was a little bit, I love NC State. NC State is, um, my happy place that I like it there. Yes. He got into South Carolina and he is, um, we're thrilled with that and excited and, it doesn't mean um, that he might not get in somewhere else um, in a few months or 
Um, you know, the whole transferring thing, I think when a college has told you no, I didn't realize this, but I have, I have decided if it were me. Now, if he said, mom, I want to transfer to Carolina in a year, I would totally support. But if it were me, <laughs> I'm just going to be blatantly honest. I would be like, I don't want to come to your school. I don't want to come to your school tomorrow. I don't want to come the next day. I don't want my great, great grandchild coming to your school. If I'm not good enough for you now, you ain't never going to get me. And someday when I'm running, you know, what is it called? Tomato. And it's taken over the old apple. And you want me to come and give some money? No way, Jose. Uh-uh. Don't you call me. No. He got deferred at state, and he did not get into Chapel Hill. He did get accepted to South Carolina. I can take a defer. The rejected thing, you know, that's just a hard, that's a hard no. And, you know, a, a lot more people got a no than a yes. And, you know, it's life. It is life. But is there a teensy weensy part of me that is thinking about calling American Express right now and saying, hello, this is Adrian Wood. I would like to do a stop payment on that alumni uh, payment to UNC Chapel Hill on December 9th. Why would I like to do it? Well, there evidently was a mistake. Yes, I don't know. I think my young son with autism actually used my credit card. So I'm going to need to to stop payment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, if they have a problem with it, you, t you just tell them to call me. Uh-huh, you just tell them to call me. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. I've had enough of listening to you. Bye-bye. Well, I tell you what, Eileen. I've had enough of listening to you. And I've just blocked you. So you don't have to listen to me ever again. Are you drinking? I wish. <laughs> no, I'm not drinking. I'm drinking water. What do you think this is, like straight vodka? You people are nuts. Don't be bitter. Ponda wood. Who's bitter? I'm not bitter. There's no bitter. Man, I'm a teensy bit peeved, but not bitter. I mean, you all cannot take a joke. Let me tell you what people are doing. If people don't get in, they're saying things like, well, they're going to end up where they need to be. You ain't never heard me say that about nothing. I'm just being honest. I really thought I could lay down in this car and cry. I had no idea. And um, so, you know what this is like? Some of you cannot handle honesty. And it's a shame that my subscriber page is not currently working because I would not be over here. So there. So on Thursday, I'll be right back on the subscriber page. So you can just come on over there and pay your little $10. This is called honesty. Now, now I forgot what I was going to say again. What was it? It was something. Shoot. <laughs> There's always some truth in a joke. I think people really struggle with um, sometimes... They just can't take it, you know, like you can, you can.
be honest and say, I'm disappointed. Oh, I know. So I remember I was pregnant and my very good friend who um, had a baby before me, she said to me, um, oh, I know we're both pregnant. And you know, at the time you're thinking there's the, they make you watch these like videos on shaken baby syndrome. And I mean, I remember I was like, why do I need to watch this video about shaken baby syndrome? I can, I would never shake my baby, right? Well, this friend of mine, I mean, just super duper smart friends. I mean, all the things. She says to me, she's got this baby that's about, I don't know, six weeks old. And she said to me, I think we were on the phone back then. You know, you did a lot of phone talking while you were nursing. She said, um, you know, I can see how somebody could shake their baby. And I was still pregnant. And I remember thinking, this is terrible. I'm so worried for her. This is, I'm concerned. Should I be worried? I was genuinely concerned. So earlier tonight, a good friend of mine said to me, this is the, who is in the same boat as I am pretty much. And I have a lot of friends that are, so there's good company. But she said, you know, this is the hardest thing. This is so hard on a mother. Now, at this point, I hadn't heard any news yet. And when I read that message, <laughs> I'm not lying. I honestly was like, this doesn't, this isn't hard. <laughs> I just, I really thought I was ready. I was like, this is not hard. I'm ready. There's no problems. Well, then I get a taste of like what I had been preparing myself for. Holy shatoli. It is hard. I mean, I, I didn't know it was going to be this hard. I haven't felt this surprised by a feeling since I got told the word autism. I remember the word autism hit me in the face like a dead fish. I could not, I was dumbfounded, absolutely dumbfounded. And here it's kind of similar, right? Like I had this little boy that's um, beautiful and wonderful and he has this diagnosis and it, I'm sad and undone, but I love him. And the same with my son not getting into college. Like, I'm sad and disappointed, but I um, I love him. I wouldn't trade him for anybody in the world, you know? And it's good to feel those feelings. It's really good to feel those feelings. <laughs> And I haven't felt those feelings in a while. And it kind of will make you feel alive, right? Like it reminds you that you're human and like how this is, this is the real world, you know, and our kids are getting a taste of the real world. And so do we cry and yell and do we, you know, pick up the phone and bitch people out? Or do we just say, you know what? I love you. And I wouldn't trade you for any other, just like my husband did, you know? Um, and maybe tomorrow, once you've had a, a time to sleep on it, maybe you say, you know what? I still want to go there and I want to transfer. Or maybe you say, you know what? I don't. Or maybe you say, I might apply somewhere new. You know? But I, I now get how, so what these people do, <laughs> what these people do, these schools do, and I really didn't get this. They tell you at the end of the day. So every year, Caroline and State love to say, you're going to hear on the 31st. Well, it's a lie. 
they tell you the Friday before the 31st. They've done it the last 10 years. So when you're getting ready next year, remember, it's the Friday before. I'd be calling admissions that Thomas got the wrong letter. So, so listen. And his advisor said, well, I know in state they get the letter when they put the thing up on the portal. They take their phones off the hook at state. And I'm thinking, I mean, this is nuts. Are there really parents that call? I mean, what would they say? How could they convince someone? I mean, why would they even call? I know why. Yes, I do. Just like I know why the good Lord told me to buy this phone. 919-966-2154. Hello? Is this the admissions office? Do you know? I'd like to know what happened today. Because I know so-and-so, and they live down the street from me, and they got a three on the SAT. Mm-hmm, yes, they did. And all they took was basket weaving. Yes, uh-huh, they sure did. Mm-hmm, yep, they did. And my child is taking quadruple, uh, quadruple, what's it called? Algorithm statistical calculus. Mm-hmm. And he's gotten, he got a 39 on the ACT. And he didn't get in. And I want to know why. (laughs) All over the state, people are writing down test scores. They're writing down GPAs. They're writing down what people took. They are taking names, kicking ass and taking names. And I might just be a teensy bit one of them. How is Thomas doing? I think he's doing okay. Don't be that mom. I'm not going to be Phyllis. I'm going to start calling you Karen. I'm not going to be. So anyway, I never could imagine calling the school. Well, now I can see why people would call the school. That's why they do it on a Friday. State didn't even put the thing out till 515. Their office lights were off. They got the hell out of there just in case there was somebody lurking around on the steps to get them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, they did. And they're smart, too, because by this time, everybody sort of settled down. And I'm not kidding you when I say this. This is totally true. This is why gun laws, that you should have to wait to buy a gun, because 32% of, like, Murders, angry murders, happen within three days of buying a gun. And I'm really not kidding. So do you remember the man in Florida this past year that went and killed his doctor because he had a bad surgery? He bought the gun that morning. Um, The school shooter whose mother is now on trial, they bought the gun for him four days before. There is something, too, not letting people have access to phones or weapons or whatever else. So I don't blame those people. Well, we're not talking about, I'm just saying the, if people are going to go and shoot somebody, of course they're going to make a phone call, you know? And they know that at these schools. They're like, "Mm mm-mm, I don't want to talk to all these people. Because they're going to call. Maybe there's an unknown reason. No, in all seriousness, I think most people know, you know, there's, so we've had affirmative action. So now no longer do schools who want diversity. And diversity is important. It's really important. And before you could check a box, what your race was. And that helped them feel like they were hitting diversity, right? We've got some whites, we've got some blacks, we've got some Hispanics, we got some Hawaiian Pacific. I tell you what, if you're Hawaiian Pacific, I bet you got a good chance of getting in. I will say that because I, I've only known one person that's Hawaiian Pacific. And he went to Chapel Hill. And um, 
So anyway, that doesn't exist anymore. And so now schools, which is good in a way. I mean, if you just want me to go ahead and espouse all my, my second, you know, PhD, real diversity is not color. Did he apply to Harvard? Yeah, he got into Harvard. Mm -hmm. He was waitlisted at Dartmouth. Yeah, yeah. He got into Stanford, U.S., uh, South, Southern California, but yeah, he didn't get into Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, it's so weird, huh? No, he didn't apply to Harvard. What are you, nuts? Do we look like Harvard people? No, no Harvard. <laughs> so anyway, now you can't, there's no box to check. So universities are getting, I think South Carolina got 53,000 applications. Somebody told me Carolina got 49,000. I would think it would have been even more than that for like 3,000 spots. So you have to go through all these applications. And before you could have white, black, blah, blah, blah. Well, now they can't do that. And the other thing that's gone now are test scores. So since COVID, test scores are optional. Georgia, Georgia said, you know what? Forget y'all. We're getting back into the test scores because we're not going to go through all these freaking applications and try to figure out who is what, you know? So now you have no test scores and no race. And you're, these schools are like, what are we going to do? So what they do is they say, we're going to look for geographic diversity. This is what I think. And we're going to pull from this county and this county, and we're going to really try to look. And we're going to look at these essays, and um, that's what we're going to do. So I would argue that a test score is probably now less important than where you live. You know, you told people not to whine one. What? I don't, I'm not whining. I'm just explaining. Whining is like, it's not fair. I'm not saying that. I'm just, I think it's, a, I have a PhD in research. I think it's really interesting to research and um, talk about it. And I did a, I did a really interesting deep dive into this several years ago, way before I had anybody um, looking at college, and I called up at Chapel Hill. And Maria Rodriguez was the, I think she was the admissions person at the time. Why not look for smart people? So Deanna, they, they don't know who the smart people are, right? Because if you have a very poor county with, um, maybe a county has no AP classes, right? And so a child gets an A in English. And then somebody in Charlotte Mecklenburg is in the International Baccalaureate Program. And they get a B in English. Do you say, well, is one B worth, is the B worth more than the A? Because you haven't been to the school. You don't know. So it makes it tricky, right? That's why they love an AP class. Because you take a test. If you take an AP test, it's the same no matter if you live in Wilmington, or if you live in San Francisco, you know? Um, so that's interesting. So it makes it harder. Um, no test scores, no, or maybe optional test scores, and depending on where you live. Um, so I think our colleges are having to work harder, and I think it's new, and it's going to take a little bit of time. So what I heard today, which I, I thought was kind of interesting, we had for the most part, kids did pretty well in our town where we live, um, which is good. You want people to get in and do well. And then, but like in Charlotte at, let's say, Myers Park International Baccalaureate Program, no one got into Chapel Hill. Less got in from Broughton's IB program, International Baccalaureate Program, than have ever gotten before. So, that's interesting. You know, that's data. That's interesting data. 
And we're talking about people that are Eagle Scouts and this, that, and the other, and they have good test scores and, you know, they're really doing well, but they live in a wealthy county. And I think that the universities are maybe moving out of the wealthier districts to look into other districts. Um, and certainly if you're um, a private school, I mean, we knew that when I knew that when we sent Thomas to boarding school, you know, I knew that, but I felt good about the education that he was going to get and was excited for him to, you know, he was given this amazing opportunity and I wanted to, I wanted him to have it, you know, and I knew that it might not help when it came to today, but I feel really good about where he goes to college and I feel like he's going to do great. You know, I have no concern at all that he's gonna, that he will do great. Um, and, and that's what I told him, you know, this is, you're going to do great, you know? High school counselor, we've been surprised by who did or didn't get accepted. Can't quite figure it out this year. So this is an interesting thought for how they may be looking at the application. Yeah, Jamie, I think it's really interesting. Somebody should get in based on merit, not where you live or what you look like. But Bernadette, they want, um, they want diversity. And we know diversity is important. I mean, you don't want to go to college and have everybody be from the same socioeconomic class, the same, the same everything. Like what makes college wonderful is that it is diverse. Um, I think, I think colleges, um, I think when you come from a place and you've struggled, I think we see lower graduation rates from four-year colleges and that, I think that's, you know, worrisome. You want, we obviously want kids to not only get in, we want them to graduate. I mean, that's super important. And I think universities hopefully are, have that kind of on their radar of how do we support these kids and give scaffolding so that they can be successful, you know? Uh, it's important. It's important. UNC for a long time has tried to be geographically diverse and not have students just from Charlotte and Raleigh. I live in rural Western and I'm convinced it's helped our students. Yeah, Beth. And it's a, it's a university, a public university, you know? Um, does the sporting school have a college advisor? Um, yes, they do. He can explain what UNC's decision making was about this year. No, Jennifer, actually they can't. I mean, I think I honestly know more about how this works from having a PhD in research and interviewing different admissions folks over the years. I mean, truly, I don't think our college counselors, and I probably talked to seven of them, they have thoughts in some of the things I have echoed to you, but nobody really knows. We just know that it's new and this was a new year, you know? Um, one thing Carolina does that, that I think would have been awesome. Um, and I have one friend whose child got in this way is you could choose on your application. If you don't get in, you can, um, go study abroad the first semester. And that's pretty neat, you know? And they don't do that at NC State. So the difference from what I understand, people are asking what is deferred and what is waitlisted and what is this, that, and the other. So Carolina doesn't have deferred anymore. They used to. So now Carolina, you either get in or you, well, there's three options. Get in, not get in, or get rejected. No, wait. Get in, not get in. That's the rejected. Or get waitlisted. And so when you get waitlisted, what the word on the street is, and this is from a, a good friend of mine that's a college counselor, what she said she's hearing is that the waitlist at Chapel Hill is going to operate like our honest-to-goodness waitlist, like at the country club. You're on a list, 
And as people say, thanks, but no thanks, that your name will come off the waiting list instead of like a mass mailing, you're off the wait list. And last year, they said only maybe four people got off the wait list for Carolina. That seems highly unlikely. But anyway, but the year before, hundreds did. Um, but we didn't get the wait list. So we're, we're the no list. But deferred means um, we're going to wait and look at your application again at regular decision time. So we... Um, Thomas applied early action to both schools, which is what you do when you know I'm really interested. You go out of your way to get your stuff in early. The thought is it's always good to apply early action. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I mean, how do you know? But um, but deferred is deferred. So I think with state being deferred, you find out like maybe in March, I was told, middle of March. Um, so there's that. So there you have it. See, and now I don't even feel like I need to call it American Express as much. What if I was on the admissions committee at UNC? You know, I don't, I don't envy these folks. I mean, I, 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 I give, I mean, I'm, I give credit to these admission people. How in the world are they supposed to know? I mean, how could you read 50,000 applications? You know, I mean, maybe a few you're like, I'm going to take the, I mean, I don't know. Are there any that maybe, are there any that automatically get in? They do say they're going to take 15% first-generation college. So I think if you're first-generation college, the, that's probably pretty good. If you're, you know, a reasonable enough student. Um, I know you wish he were home. So he, my son is not here. He is with my parents and two friends. Um, who also applied to Chapel Hill, but they were out of state and didn't get in. So they didn't act like they were surprised. But in general, I feel like um, a lot of people were disappointed. This is a big class, though, too. When I was pregnant with Thomas, I have a, of all four of my children, I have the most, um, the biggest group of college friends with kids this exact same age. Um so it's a really big group, I think, around the state. Uh, so anyway, today is your birthday. <gasps> Happy birthday. But I feel a little bit, I feel a little bit better. Had to wait and start. So my cousin was saying the same thing. Like you could, you might get, after the defer thing, you might get in. Or they might say, you can come second semester. Or I had another friend who they said to him, if you go somewhere else for two semesters and get a three, five, you can transfer over here. And he did. Um, so who knows? What does Thomas want to do when he grows up? You know, I'm not sure. He wants to study economics or he thinks he does. What do I want to do when I grow up? I think I'm going to be a vlogger. Carolina Global Launch Program. Oh, that's how your son got in. I'm not sure he will want to spend. Oh, that's how he got in today, Wanda. Congratulations. I'm not sure he will want to spend his first semester of college abroad. He also got into state with a second choice major. I'm not sure that he wants to do that either. Lots of decisions. Well, congratulations on him having good decisions to make. That's great. Um... Yeah, it's tricky. What school in South Carolina? University of South Carolina. University of South Carolina. Um, and you know, there are parents out there that they just, and I do know this, 
yeah, now I feel like I'm totally recovered. This is, this is when somebody one time was like, you need to go to therapy. I was like, therapy? Who needs freaking therapy? Hello? <laughs> I have my blog. Um, ooh, only bad thing about this wax phone is it's going to get wax on my plexiglass tray from Home Goods. Um, there are parents out there tonight who maybe they lost their children to cancer or in a car accident and they wish more than anything that they were sitting here thinking about college, you know, and they didn't get that opportunity. And I value that for them and value the experience that I'm getting to have. And there are parents out there who have children with disabilities that are not going to go through this path. That is me. You know, I have two more children on the traditional route, and then I have another one. And all my friends that have kids his age, they're going to all be having these heart palpitations, and I'm not. You know, and I'm going to be sad that I'm not doing that for him. And I'm going to be happy for them. And, you know, they're going to be, oh, we didn't get in. And I'm going to be like, oh, y'all are so lucky to be able to go through this process. You know what I mean? And so I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. And, yeah, and I really do believe it. Where you are today if you really went back through your life and you looked at how you got here, it was because, or for me, there were a lot of doors that were shut on me. So I really had to, I mean, I, I went a snaky route, you know, I wanted to go to Carolina. I didn't get in and good thing. Well, one, I probably wouldn't have graduated. And two, I wouldn't have gone to Meredith where I got a great education and for the first time in my life, I heard somebody say, boy, you're smart, you know, and we believe in you. And what if I think about the first person maybe you thought you wanted to marry or the first job you wanted or where the house you wanted to buy and you didn't get it or, you know, all those little things when life dealt you lemons and you made lemonade, you know? Um, sometimes we're lucky not to get the things we want. Yeah, we are. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Did he decide against the Air Force? He did not apply to the Air Force Academy. Thank goodness. Yeah, that would have killed us going to all that work. I already made him do a bunch of stuff. He's, I made him take the ACT like 909 times. <laughs> Shoot. Um, so what's the plan now? You know, I don't know, Phyllis. We're not going to make one right now. He's going to have a good weekend with his grandparents and his friends. And um, it's the end of January, so he'll hear from the Honors College at South Carolina the middle of February. Um, so that'll be good. So he'll at least know what that option is. And, um, I mean, obviously, I think we'll make plans to go see it and do all that stuff, but we'll probably wait till he finds out from that so we can kind of know what we're going to see. And then, um, I don't know. I don't know. He might say, well, you know what? I want to go ahead and apply to ECU or, you know what? Maybe I, I don't know. I'm curious. I mean, I'm excited. Maybe he's going to do, I don't know what he's going to do. I can tell you what he is not going to do. He says he, cause I said, you know, you could live at home. He is not living at home. That is not on his agenda. Mm. Mm. Oh, right, Stacy. Totally get it. 
Yeah, so I don't know what he's going to do. Um, oh, I'm glad, Vicky. I did community college for a year. Um, you know, he, the right many friends are at UNCW. And he he probably should have applied there. It's probably too late now. But he did not apply there. Um, I think we, I mean, I really thought he'd get into state. So maybe that was our, you know, our fault. But I really did think he would. Um I really did. So, anyway. I me I wrong. <laughs> My only son wanted UNC and didn't get in. He loved college and ended up playing golf. Ended up at Wofford. Oh, I hear people like Wofford. Well, and you know, I think it's okay to... I don't want to say something to him like, well, you know, you're this or you're that. Like, you know what? I mean, I really thought if I were not in this car with Russell, I would stop the car and cry. <laughs> but then I, you know, moved on. <clears throat> Sandy Adams. Seriously. So he just didn't make the cut. He'll be fine. There are plenty of other schools. You're probably more disappointed than he is. Sandy, I think you're probably right. And again, I think, Sandy, if you know me, I want people to acknowledge the way they feel. And I realize for you that might be very uncomfortable because there are a lot of people that cannot Acknowledge their heart. None of my business, but did he submit his ACT scores? Yes, he did. He, I think he chose economics as his major. And then maybe his second choice was um, exploratory or something. I was not as involved in that part of it. I think his counselor helped him. Um, have fun with Russell this weekend. Russell does not feel great. Russell was, Russell was nervous. My 10th grader was like, oh God. I mean, he's like, I got to finish this history paper. I mean, I think it's stressful to watch your oldest brother who you think hung the moon. I mean, all three of them think my oldest son hung the moon and I think my oldest son feels like he needs to show that he hung the moon, you know? And that's pressure. Like, he's this oldest sibling that wants to be the good example for them. And boy, he has been. So I think some of it is he's a little probably annoyed, mad that he, that they can't, he feels like they can't look up to him. I'm just guessing. Those are the kinds of feelings he would feel, though. He's just a nice kid. Um, University of Richmond is a great school. Thomas did not apply there. Um, I wish he had. He has a good friend that applied and got deferred. University of Richmond is, is hard to get into, too. I mean, I don't know where all these people have come from. Like, how did South Carolina have... 8,000 people apply and 10 years later have 53,000. I mean, where did they come from? It's almost like that movie Gremlins when the water gets on them and they just start pow, pow, pow. One of her best friends at Wofford came from Episcopal. Oh, that's nice. Um, it's They have a long weekend. Texas State College admission system is very difficult to get in. Well, that's what I hear about Florida, too. Florida is really tricky. Your granddaughter did not, was deferred from NC State. Um, feels devastated. She wants pre-med. Well, I know. It's disappointing. It's disappointing. Um... I don't 
was waitlisted. Two more. Yeah, it's disappointing. And life is disappointing. I think it's one thing to be disappointed. I think probably what hurts a little bit is when you're like, darn it, you know, I could have done that. You know, when everybody applies for 10 colleges and can only go to one. Well, I don't know who's applying to any 10 colleges. We only applied to three. We maybe should have done a couple more. Um, well, I know why Carolina's hard to get into is because all the kids applying to Ivy League schools also apply to Carolina. <laughs> it's true. Oh, golly. Um, you still have to pay. Do they honor legacy students? No. No, sir. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. I don't even think, you remember before you could like give money? Not like my $100 I'm about to take back from the Amex card. Now, somebody told me, <laughs> where's Amos? He's in the bed. Somebody told me, this was an admission. I mean, y'all think I'm, I hadn't done some research way before tonight. For years, I've been researching this. That the this university, a major university, I said, can money get you in? And she said, our minimum is $18 million and they have to have the check before the acceptance. Well, now you can see why those Lori Lachlan or whoever, they were doing all that pretend rowing. I mean, paying somebody 700000 is a hell of a lot cheaper than $20 million, right? <laughs> so anyway, get him a puppy. I ain't getting anybody any puppy. Y'all crazy? I've got a dog and two cats and an autistic 10-year-old. Um, and do you have feelings of, did I do something wrong in helping the child? Um, you know, Lisa, I, I don't feel like that now. And maybe that's good because maybe I've been saying all the wrong things, but you know, I always say to you, if one of my children does something terrible, I'm not going to feel guilty because I'll be like, well, I did the best I could. I really feel like I've done the best I can. I think my husband and I have done the best we can. I don't regret any of our decisions. Um, I'm thrilled that he's had the high school that he's had. Um, I don't think I'd go back and do anything different, honestly. And even if there was stuff I would do different, um, what the hell, I can't go do it now, but I really don't. I'm, so personally, I'm not feeling that way. I feel like we really done the best we could. Uh, other than marrying somebody who's Hawaiian Pacific, darn it. I'm, I'm just kidding. You know, all of you have thought about that when you look at those tiny little boxes, but now they're gone. So, I mean, that's over. So then I would have gone to all that trouble trying to find the right husband. It wouldn't even have worked. He did not get into Chapel Hill. No. Did his college advisor not have more than three to apply on his list? Yes, his college advisor did have more than three on his list. And Thomas did not apply to all of them. Mm -hmm. Because we are trying to let Thomas make some decisions, you know, because Thomas is going to be a grown up someday and I cannot always micromanage him. Um, so I'm, you know, I, no, he was supposed to apply, I think to UNCW, ECU, but he can still apply there. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, oh, I think my husband's disappointed. I'm glad he's not home. I know there are all these 
people I know, they love their husbands and blah, la 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 la. And I do love them. But I mean, I can tell you what. I would have paid somebody a thousand dollars to get him out of here this weekend. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me that I'm not having to sit and talk to him about this. <laughs> oh, he's so tired of hearing him. I mean, <laughs> he's, I don't even know how to, if you don't say something, you can't say something nice. Don't say anything at all. I'm surprised the counselor didn't get on him. Well, I mean, Carmen, what are they going to do? Beat him with a spoon? I mean, I'm his mother and I'm, you know, <laughs> I mean, he, oh yeah. I'm glad I don't have to look at him. They're real glad, especially state where he went. They're real glad that they closed that admissions office. I mean, you, the last thing you want is him calling you. And then his dad would probably have been calling Carolina. This is, hello, this is Tom Wood. I'm here. When I went to Carolina, I was at Episcopal. The admissions director spent the night on our couch all night long in the dorm. And he begged and begged us, please, please come to Carolina. We want you. You must come to Carolina. And we didn't want to go to Carolina. But then I thought, well, I wouldn't mind being a zate. So I guess I'll go. Ain't nobody begging you anymore. Mm. <laughs> I think that's what I'll do for my subscribers this week. I think I'll get my father-in-law to come in and talk about college admissions. I cannot wait to tell if you see my in-laws, don't tell them yet because I haven't told them yet. What? He didn't get in? Do you want me to call Donna Cobb? I can call him. You know, he knows so-and-so. His sister married the man that started eHarmony, and we can call them right now and tell them this is enough, and we are not going to handle this and we need to come up there and we don't understand why there hadn't been an interview. What in the hell has happened to the interviews? We need the interviews because that is how our people that we know get into the school. No more interviews. We're all fucked. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and it's good. That the some of that is gone. <laughs> oh, and then your cousin, I mean, your cousin was here. You know him, Billy Prudent. He got kicked out of, got kicked out of Carolina, I think. Or was that somebody else? Because he was shooting squirrels on campus. No, that was at Woodbury. Then he went to Carolina and he let the Duran, took the horse up on the third floor. Well, did you know horses can't go downstairs? They can only go upstairs. So they had to get a crane to get that horse out. And then they made him leave, too. Big T did not go to UNC. My father-in-law went to UNC. But my husband claims that he got into UNC off the waiting list. I would like to see uh, evidence of that. I have never seen a letter or anything my husband, the longer he's been out of college, the more colleges he's gotten in off the waiting list. Don't let anyone pull strings. I don't have any strings to pull, Linda. There are no strings to pull. String pulling is over. Carolina is no longer a marionette house. No sorry, Bobby. Mm -mm. No, it's not. But I did hear a story about this one family, and they had this nice gift. They gave Carolina all their, um, what were they? Cars? Yeah, like a fleet of cars. They made sure that everybody had their cars and their child didn't get in. And you know what they did? They sent, this is a true story. They sent up an 18 wheeler and they picked up all those cars and they said, goodbye, Carolina. 
And I always heard that Bill Gates' wife, Melinda, went to Duke, and I heard she didn't get into Carolina, and somebody got fired 25 years later. Why did you not let Melinda Gates into Duke? You dumbass. <laughs> you really got to be careful with the women, because you don't know who they're going to marry. And we know women can be successful. <laughs> My brother did go to South Carolina, and he loved it. He loved it. He really did love it. And they South Carolina was a great school for him. Um, he really liked it. Comments on this page irk me. Well, Donna, don't ever be a blogger. Because you're going to hate it. You're going to hate these people. And you're going to hate all sorts of things. And they're going to send you messages. And they're going to tell you how disappointed they are. And how you're a terrible mother. And how Fruit Loops make people develop monomania. And they're going to tell you that you do not talk to your children enough. And that you secretly are drunk all the time on your own videos. Even when you're drinking water. Because they don't understand that you might just be funny. Because you're not allowed to be funny because you should have more pride than to act like that on camera in your robe with no bra on. It's too much. I don't like it and it makes me uncomfortable. And if you're going to see me on the street, they are not going to talk to her because they're going to say she's too much. And I don't like it and I'm not talking to her. Mm -mm. No. And they don't want to be on my blog and I'm not going to make them be on my blog. No, I don't even want them on my blog. And then they're going to say, don't put this story on your blog. And I say to them, my blog is about me. It's not about you. Ain't nobody cares about you on my blog. It's my blog. So there. Hmm. There. Oh, I do feel better. Well, to all the mamas out there that are feeling a little bit sad, feel the feelings, just like me. And now let's just wake up to a new day. We're fine. I lost track of who you were talking about. I lost track too. <laughs> oh, God. Now I've got to tell my parents and my in-laws tomorrow. And I'm to go through all this again. Subscribers, I promise you when my in-laws come over here, I'm definitely doing a subscriber video. And you're going to legitimately hear those stories. You want Fruit Loops. We stopped it. When I stress, I eat. When I'm not stressed, I eat. When I celebrate, I eat. I also like to shop. So I went into Home Goods. Like, literally had picked up Russell and was waiting to hear. And I was just walking around Home Goods, And I was thinking, I have nothing to buy. I don't need pillows. I don't need blankets. I don't need anything. And alas, I got this phone and I love it. Yep, I got the candle phone. And all of you are jealous. And you know when I'm going to light this candle? I'm going to light this candle when Thomas decides where he's going to college. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Thank you for being vulnerable and talking to us about this tonight. You know, thank you for saying thank you. I, you know, there was a part of me that just wanted to fix myself a painkiller and bury my face in that pillow and cry some tears. Like a friend of mine said, I'll just be excited for tomorrow. And I was thinking, well, I'm not excited for tomorrow. I'm going to be just as foul tomorrow as I'm going to be tonight. Well, now I feel better. You saw the same candle in Home Goods? Did you buy it? Wonder. It's so soft and rubby. Miami University. Oh, I know Miami University. My grandmother and my papa both graduated from Miami University. Mm -hmm. 
my grandmother, her name was Virginia. She was a Chi Omega at Ohio University. Her name was Virginia Lee Masterton. But come to find out, her real name was Virginia Willa Masterton, but she didn't like the name Willa, so she changed her middle name to Lee after a boyfriend she had. Mm -hmm. She ended up at Miami University because her father was a stone, her grandfather was a stonemason, and they moved to Athens, Ohio to build the university. Wake Forest is located in Winston-Salem. It used to be located in Wake Forest. Has Thomas been accepted at any universities? Yes, he has. He's been accepted at the Come Back Home and Live with Your Mama University. Soft and rubby. It is soft and rubby. I mean, something about wax. I mean, rubby. What's wrong with that? I'll send you 4,000 stars if you like that candle. <coughs> now there's wax in my throat. And my papa was a um, Sigma Chi. And my dad was a Sigma Chi. <laughs> you better send me those stars. This is good practice for me. Oh my gosh, it's midnight. I've got to go to bed. No, he's gotten into South Carolina and he, we're very excited about it. Where are those stars deferred? I said earlier, Angelina, it means they're going to look at your application I get. Yeah, it does. <laughs> wax in my throat. COVID. God, COVID's the least of my worries. The flu and this crap I've had is worse than COVID for me. 50 stars. Uh-uh. That one on the bat. Where is it? Who said that about sending me the stars if I lick that thing? I'm going to find it and I'm going to file a suit. Where is it? Hold on. Who was it that said it? Was it Catherine? Yeah, it was Catherine. Catherine Brody. Listen, you turd bucket. You better send me 4,000 stars. Or I'm going to ban you on the next video forever. <laughs> Subscribers, see you in the morning. We're going to have a coffee chat, and it's going to be nice. <laughs> Goodbye.